Hello everyone. So today we will discuss joins. So what is join? Joins or articulations or arthrosis is a point of contact between two or more bones between cartilage and bones or between teeth and bone. So basically joint is a point contact between bones and another bones. There are several types. You know, if you see this, you see the uh, joints in the skulls. So there are several bones that join together. So this is a type of joint also. And if you see in the legs, there is a tibia and fibula bones. There is fiber that connect them. So this is another type of uh, joint. And this is a very typical type of joints uh, located in the knee. And this is also another joint between the teeth and the bones, right? like in the mandible or maxilla, lower jaws or the upper jaw. Okay, there are type of bones, so it can be classified based on structure or anatomy or it can be also classified based on functions or the physiology. Now, based on the structure, how it look like, or uh, what type of tissue that uh, make up the joints, there are three types of joint. The first one is called the fibrous joint. And it's a name telling you, there are a fiber, a fiber connective tissue that joins one bone with another bone. So this is fibrous connective tissue. The second type is called the cartilaginous joint. And the name is also telling you there is a cartilage that joins one bone with another bone. And the last one, is called the synovial joint. This is the regular joint that we know, which is the joint that have a very complex structure. And they usually have what we call the synovial cavity. Okay. So based on the functions, mostly about movement, there are three types of joints also. The first one is called the synarthrotis. Uh, Sin atrosis, which is type of joint that unable to move. So this is immovable joint. The second one is called the amphiarthrosis. This is the type of joint that give a very little movement, a slightly movable joint. And the last one is called the diarthrosis, which is the type of joint that we know that give the free movement. So this is a freely movable type of joint. Uh, mostly so the fibrous joints, they are sin arthrosis. Okay, so most of the fibrous joints, they are immovable joint. Most of the cartilaginous joints, they are amphiarthrosis. So give a slight movement. Some sin arthrosis, okay, unable to move. And of course, the last one, the synovial joint, which is the joint that we know usually, this is the one that give all the diarthrosis or freely movable joint. So let's remember this, all, okay, so all synovial joint, they are diarthrosis. They are freely movable joint. Now we start with the first type of joint, the fibrous joint. So this is based on structure. 
So this is the type of joints that have fiber, mostly dense connective tissue, okay, with many collagen fiber that bind two bones together. There are three types of fibers joint. The first one is called the syndesmosis. So this syndesmosis, they are only located in two places in our body, which is between tibia and fibula. Okay, so between tibia and fibula here, and also between the uh, radius and ulna. Okay, so uh, to put another one over here and between radius and ulna. Okay, so this is located in the uh, lower arms and also on the legs. Okay, so you see this is a fiber that connects these two bones, okay, radius and ulna, and the one that connects the tibia and fibula. Okay, from this, we should be able to guess that there, there will be slight movement okay, between these two bones. So this syndesmosis mostly amphiarthrosis, a slightly movable joint. The second type of fibrous joint is called the suture. So suture is actually type of joint that's located in our skulls, mostly in the cranium. You see, we have frontal bones over here. We have two parietal bones. We have occipital bones on the back, and we have the temporal bones on the side. So if you see these bones are connected with this joint. Uh, so this joint is called the suture. Okay. Now there are, if you see this, there are four types of suture on our cranium. The first one is this one over here. Okay, this is the first suture, which is between the frontal bone and the two parietal bones. Okay, so this one. So this is what we call the coronal suture. So this is the first type of suture. The second one is the one that's located between the two parietal bones. So the blue one over here, I make it blue. Okay, blue joint. And this is what we call the sagittal suture. The third one is the ones that located between the two parietals and the occipital bone. It's not gonna be this one, it's gonna be this. Okay, and this is what we call the lamboidal suture. So this is number three. And the last one, I'm gonna use the same yellow color over here is between the parietal bones and the temporal bone. So this suture is called the squamous suture. Okay. And of course, we are unable to move our cranium. Okay. Even though we have a joint between the bones in the cranium, we are unable to move it. Therefore, the functional type of suture are synarthropis. So this is immovable type of joint. Now the last type of fibrous joint is called the gomphosis. The gomphosis is joint between teeth or tooth and the bone, okay, which is the upper jaw or the lower jaw. So this is what we call the 
gone forces. And we should know that the gone forces should be sin arthrosis. So this is immovable type of joint. So if you are able to move or if the teeth or the tooth is actually moving in the socket, it means that there is a problem with our tooth. It should be stay. It is immovable type of joint. Okay, now the second type of joint based on structure is called the cartilogenous joint. And again, this is uh, joint that made with cartilage. Okay, there are two types of cartilage that connect the two bone, whether high line cartilage or the fibro cartilage. Therefore, based on this type of cartilage, there are two types of cartilaginous joint. The first one is called the synchondrosis, which is made of the hyaline cartilage. So the bones are connected with the hyaline uh, cartilage. Example is the joint between the sternum, okay, the breastbone. Okay, so this is the strand sternum with the ribs. Okay, so the ribs, we have 12 pairs of ribs okay, and seven of them are connected directly to the sternum with this type of cartilage, which is highline cartilage. Okay, so this is a type of synchondrosis. And this one, okay, they are synarthrosis. This is immovable type of joint. Okay, so synchondrosis, they are immovable type of joint. The second type of cartilaginous joint is the symphysis. Okay, symphysis, uh, this is the one that have fibrocartilage. So fibrocartilage is the strongest type of cartilage. Uh, examples, uh, we have two places that have this symphysis. The first one is between the hip bones uh, in our uh, fibic area. Therefore, the name is called the, this one over here, it's called the pubic symphysis. Okay. And the second location is between the vertebrae. Okay. So between vertebrae, we have what we call the intercalated disc that's actually made of fibrocartilage. So this connection between one rib, I mean one, uh, vertebrae with another vertebrae uh, using this fibrocartilage is called a symphysis. Okay, so this is another type of symphysis. So can we move? Yes, we can bend our back, for example, or there is a little bit movement between the hip bones in the pubic symphysis. Therefore, this symphysis uh, will be um, Arthrosis. There is a slightly movement between the bone. Okay, the last one, the last type of joint, okay, is called the synovial joint. And again, this is the joint that usually we know as a joint because this is the joint that all of them are diarthrosis. This is freely movable joint. Okay, like for example, joint in our uh, shoulder, uh, in the knee, in the elbow, uh, we can move, uh, we can move. There is a movement, freely movable joints on that area. So this is what we call the synovial joint. It has a complex structure and they also have uh, additional structure that make this joint stronger. So there are several structure or components of synovial joint. The first one, there is an area of the bone is called the articular cartilage. 
So you usually look at it at the end of the bone. Yeah, I can make yellow color over here. So each bone at the end will have the cartilage. Okay. And this cartilage, because located in the articulation in the joint area, is called the articular cartilage. And what's the function for this one? This articular cartilage will reduce friction okay, between the bone okay, during movement. And then the second part is yeah, going to be the what we call the capsule, a capsule that cover the joint area. This is what we call the joint capsule or articular capsule. The next one is ligaments. A ligament is fibrous connective tissue that connects one bone with another bone, usually on the outside of that synovial capsule. And this ligament will hold the bone together. Okay? When they, there is a movement, it will strengthen the structure. And synovial membrane, okay? synovial membrane is part of the joint capsule that located inside. Okay, so the, this is actually the inner membranes of the capsule. Okay, this is what we call the synovial cavity. And this synovial cavity produce a fluid. Okay, and that fluid is called the synovial fluid. And this fluid will fill the area between the bones inside this capsule. And the function for this synovial fluid is for reducing the uh, friction, just like uh, you know oils in the uh, engine, they will make the movement between the bones becomes easy. Okay, and there are some other uh, components. Okay, uh, in some joint, like there is a meniscus. Okay, this is meniscus. And this is actually uh, cartilage or heart components that will give the shape for the joint. And bursa, bursa is a empty space uh, that's located in some joint. Sometimes okay, uh, bacteria uh, can cause infection in uh, bursa. And that infection is called the bursitis. Okay, so bursitis is inspection of bursa by mostly bacteria, okay, inflammation of uh, joint area. Okay, so this is the uh, components of synovial joint. Now, there are several types of synovial joint. And based on the structure, there will be six, uh, six types of joint or synovial joint. The first one is called the plane or planar, or sometimes is also known as a gliding joint because it gives movement of gliding or rubbing between the bone on this type of joint. The second one is called the hinge joint, just like hinge in the door. So uh, the structure is very similar. Pivot joint, eh? condyloid joint, saddle joint and ball and socket type of joint. So these are the six type of synovial joint based on the structure. Now, based on the movement, just remember all the synovial joint, they are dry, uh, diarthrosis, okay? So freely movable joint. However, there are several type of movement uh, for the diarthrosis. The first one is called the gliding movement, eh, rubbing movement between the bone. And this is usually present in the planar type of joint. So planar will give gliding movement. The second one is called the angular movement. 
head from the name. This is angle over here. So the angular movement is the movement that changes the angle between the bone. Right? Uh, there are several types. The first one is flexion. So flexion is actually movement that reduces the angle. Okay? Like for example, if you flex your elbow, okay, the angles between the humerus and radius of ulna will be reduced. Okay, it's flexion. Uh, extension, this is the one that increase the angle. Okay, if you extend your uh, elbow, for example, the angle will be increasing. And if we perform the extension that is over or higher than 100 degree angle, uh, it is called the hyper extension. Usually you cannot do it with your uh, elbow because your elbow only gives the highest angle 180 degree, which is the straight line. Uh, you cannot perform with this uh, elbow, uh, the hyperextension, but you can perform with, for example, with uh, your uh, hip joint. Okay, we're gonna see the examples later. Okay, and there is a movement called the abduction. Okay, so abduction. Just remember abduction, just like a you know, a, a kid is abducted by the alien. So it is away, eh? so away from the midline. Okay, and the opposite of ad abductions will be adduction, which is going toward the midline. Okay, and the last one for this angular movement is called the circumduction, which is type of movement that give a cone shape. Okay, like for example, if you move your shoulder, if you make a circular movement of your shoulder, it will give this cone shape movement. And this is what we call the circumduction. The next one, uh, uh, okay, for the angular movement, usually hinge joints will give some angular movement. Uh, condyloid can also give an uh, angular movement. And ball and socket will also give the angular movement. The next one is rotation, uh, which is the movement uh, of your body on the axis. Okay? Example, when you say no, no, uh, with your head, your head will rotate to the left and to the right. So this is rotation. And usually the one that give rotation type of movement is the fifth joint. So fifth joint, uh, will usually give a type of rotation. And the last one is called the special movement. Uh, this is special movement on special area, like for example, uh, on the mandible and lower jaw, you can move into four type of movement over here. Okay, when you move your jaw, forward, eh, this is called the protraction. If you move it inward, then it is called the retraction. If you elevate your jaw, eh, like when you chewing the food, for example, eh, it gives the movement called the elevation. And when you chew the food, sometimes you also depress or move downward of your mandible, of your lower jaw. And that movement is called the depression. In the foot, ankle, eh, there are also four types of special movement. Eh? When you inverse or move your ankle inward, eh, this is called the inversion. 
If you move it outward, this is called the E version. Yeah, so this is inward. Uh, e version is outward. Yeah, and then there is a dorsiflexion when we flex our foot up. Yeah. And when we flex the foot down, it's called the plantar flexion. On the arms yeah, and also our hand, we can make a two movement. It's called a special movement for the pronation and supination. Okay, we're going to see the examples right here. Okay. Okay, so this location, some location of the six structural type of synovial joint. Okay. Again, the first one is the planar joint. Uh, example is the joint between the navicular and the second and the third cuneiform bone. Remember, this is located in the ankle. Okay. Uh, so the movement is going to be gliding left to right. Like when we move our foot inward, okay, in person. Okay, and also E person outward. This is actually done by this type of joint, okay, the planar or gliding joint. Okay, the second type is hinge joint, like for example, between this humerus and ulna, this is elbow joint. Okay, so it will give some angular movement, like flexion and extension. This is the third type, the pivot joint. You see the whole structure over here. And there is a bone that actually fill that hole. And what happens? We able to move our joints, uh, rotate our joint. And this is the rotation. Okay, for pivot joint, the movement usually rotation. The next one is condylar joint. So you see the type of joint over here. There is a little bit uh, process. Eh? And another bone will have a little bit depression. Eh? So you can make a little bit like this. Okay. There is a process over here. And there is a depression over here. Eh? Like a little bit uh, depression in the bone. So this is type of condylar joint. Example is between the scaphoid and the radius. So this is located in our wrist, okay, in the wrist. And we can move several movement over here. We can move like flexion, extension, uh, circumductions with this type of condylar joint. The next one is saddle joint. Eh? It looks like saddle. Example is located between the trapezium and the first metacarpal. Eh? So this is in our uh, hand, in our wrist area also. And the movement Okay, usually uh, kind of uh, flexion uh, and extension type of movement. And the last one, this is ball and socket. And this is the type of joint that can give almost all type of movement because this is very, very freely movable type of joint. We only have two type of ball and socket joint. Okay, which is the first one is in shoulder. 
Okay, so shoulder joint is ball and socket. And the other location is in the hip. Okay, so hip joint is also shoulder and socket. And if you see over here, there is a ball structure, which is a process. And there is a cup structure okay, or the socket structure, which is actually depression in the ball. And it's give the ball and socket type of joint. Again, this is the most freely movable type of joint. Now we're gonna see example of that movement. Okay, the type of movement at the sinusoidal joint. This is angular movement. So angular movement is the movement that change the angle. Example: If we use uh, our this one, see, we're gonna use the hip joint over here, right? So you can flex the shoulder, I mean the the hip, right? So what happens? The angle over here is become lower. Okay, so from let's say 100 degree and then lower into maybe uh, 90 degree. Okay, that's flexion. If we increase the angle, let's say from here 90 and then boom, going to 180, and this is what we call the extension. We can move more than 180, let's say this over here, okay, maybe 270 uh, degree, and this is what we call the hyper extension. Okay. Another angular type of joint, this is in the knee joint. When we move this knee, eh, which is decrease the angle, it become flexion. And we can also extend our knee extension, which is increase, let's say from 90 to 180. So this is extension. Elbow, the same thing, only two types of movement, which is flex your elbow. So it's lower the degree. So this one may be from, let's say this is 145 okay, degree into only 90 degree. So this is flexion. If you increase it from 90, until, for example, 180 degree over here, straight line, as it is a straight line, then the movement is called the extension. The same thing with your wrist, you can also move, reduce the angle, flexion, increase the angle, extension, increase more, okay, more than 100 degree, this is the hyper extension. Uh, our shoulder, the same thing, we can flex flexion and then also hyperextension or maybe just extension. Uh, this is abduction and adduction. So remember, abduction means away. So this is midline, so our body. So away from the midline is called the abduction. Moving toward the midline. Okay, this is what we call the adduction. And the same thing with our hip, we can also perform ad, abduction away or toward the midline. So this is the midline over here. This is the adduction. With our finger, uh, we can also move away. Uh, this is adduction, or move it inside. Uh, this is adduction. Okay, so this is adduction, moving inside. Uh, adduction, abduction, away. And this is when we move circular movement with our shoulder, it can give the circumduction. Type of movement. The same thing with the hip joint. When we make a circular movement of our legs, it will give the cone 
type of shape. Eh? So this is what we call the circumdax. Same thing with this one, also give the cone shape of movement. This is what we call the circumdax. Rotation, this is example rotation. When we rotate our arm uh, inside, it's going to be medial because this is medium, eh, middle part of our body. And it's going to be lateral when we move it out from our body. So this is lateral rotation. And it's going to be medial rotation. Example of special movement. I mentioned before movement of our jaw over here. When it is up, it's called the elevation. When it is down, it's called the depression. When we move it forward, this is protraction. When we move it inward or backward, this is retraction. Okay, now on the foot, on our ankle, if we move it inside, uh, it's called the inversion. If we move it outside, it's called the eversion. If we flex up, uh, it's called the dorsiflexion. If we flex down, then it is plantar flexion. This is pronation and supination. Remember, prone, uh, prone position uh, is actually uh, when we stand and then we lay down on the bed, okay, the prone area of our body is actually is in the dorsal of our hand over here. So we, we move our hand or our arms to this dorsal area and this movement is called the pronation. If we flip our hand, and we show the uh, palm, right? that movement is called the supination. So when you're flipping your hand and showing the palms, right? that movement is supination. If you hide the palm, that movement is called the pronation. Okay, now we're gonna use Several examples of joints, shoulder, elbow, hip, and the knee. So as examples of synovial joint. We start with the shoulder. And of course, you see in the shoulder, there is a ball structure and the socket structure. Right? So the ball is actually the head of the humerus. And the socket structure is actually the cavity of our uh, shoulder blade. Okay. So this is glenoid cavity. So it's making the ball and socket type of joint. Okay. The head of humerus and the glenoid cavity making this type of ball and socket joint. And uh, there are several ligaments okay, that make this joint become uh, stronger. And there are three of them, coracohumeral ligament, glenohumeral ligament, and transverse humeral uh, ligament. So this is actually give you the, tell you the positions at the ligament between the coracoid, which is part of the shoulder blade, and the humerus bone. Eh? Glenohumeral, this is between the glenoid cavity, which is part of the shoulder blade, with the humerus bone. It's give this ligament. So this ligament, uh, coraco ligaments, uh, glenohumeral ligament, and the transverse humeral ligament, yeah, transverse straight. Uh, and these are the three main ligaments in the shoulder that give strength to the shoulder joint. So we can move our shoulder joints easily uh, and that movement will keep the bones in place because of this ligament. The next one is the elbow joint, which is the connection or the joint between the humerus, okay, the upper arm 
uh, bone and the two lower arm bone, which is the uh, radius and ulna. Okay, so radius is the bigger one and ulna is the smaller one. Okay. Now, there is a connection over here okay? and this connection is called the hinge joints. The hinge joint, actually there are two uh, in the elbow joint, okay? there are two types of joint. This is hinge and planar. Okay? You know, the straight, type of joint, okay, a flat surface of joint, it will give the plane and the planar or gliding type of joint. So basically there are two types of joints located in the elbow joint, hinge and planar. And there are also ligaments that make this joint become also stronger. Okay. The first one is radial collateral ligament, okay, so this is radial ligament, and then ulnar ligaments, the bottom side, okay, and the annular ligament on the other side, okay, so from the other uh, part of this joint. The next one is hip joint, and hip joint, the same like a shoulder joint, it has a ball structure, which is the head of the femur, and the socket structure, which is part of the hip bone, it is called the acetabulum. So acetabulum, acetabulum is actually the socket of this uh, joint. And there is also three ligaments, three type of ligaments that strengthen the hip joint. And the first one is called the iliofemoral uh, ligament. Okay, so this is iliofemoral ligaments, uh, which is between ilium and the femur. And then the pubofemoral ligament, which is between the pubic bone, the pubis, and the femur. And so therefore, it's called the pubofemoral ligament. And the last one is ischiofemoral ligament, which is between ischium. This is uh, ischium. Uh, ischium, part of the hip and this is the femur. So it's connecting these two bones. Okay? It's called the uh, isiofemoral ligament. Okay, the next one is a knee joint. And in the knee joint, there is also hinge and plan. Okay? It's a planar or gliding. The hinge is located between the femur here and the tibia, okay? there is a hinge type of joint. And the plane or the gliding joint is between the femur and the tibia. You see the flat structure over here? When it is moving, like flexing or extending the knee, there is a rubbing movement between the patella and the femur. Okay? So this is a type of gliding joint or planar joint. The ligaments, it has more complex ligaments compared to the shoulder, the elbow, and also the hip. So this is actually a very strong type of joint. Okay, there is a patellar ligaments okay, between patella and the uh, femur oblique popliteal ligament. Okay. And arcuate popliteal ligament. 
a little bit smaller over here. Uh, tibia collateral uh, ligaments. Let's say from the side. And then fibular collateral ligaments. There is anterior cruciate ligaments. And this is sometimes the one that is broken when, you know, uh, someone play sport like a soccer or maybe, you know, uh, kick, kick balls, okay? Because they're using that uh, knee uh, very uh, hard. So sometimes this small ligament over here can be broken. So this is cruciate ligament, uh, posterior cruciate ligament, which is on uh, the back, which is under the anterior cruciate ligament. So these are several ligaments that strengthen the knee joint. Okay, now we go to the last one, which is the joint disorder. This is the condition when the joints have a problem, maybe because of the sport or because of older age, uh, because of the less productions of Synovial fluid, for example, it can cause problem to the joint. Like for example, dislocation, which is displacement of articulating surface, common in shoulder, knee, okay? Uh, sprain, it is common in the ankle, yes, sprain ankle, for example. Uh, Thorns ligament, okay? because of twisting, overextensive use of the joint can break the ligament. Bursitis, I mentioned before, this is inflammation of bursa due to infections. Uh, sometimes also used uh, because of overuse and stress. And then arthritis, okay? the, there are several types of arthritis. And that is inflammation of joint in general. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis, this is due to uh, antibody that actually kill our own joint cell. So this is what we call the autoimmune disease. Orthoarthritis, this is usually uh, happenings when uh, in the older age, yeah, which is the generative, the generative of joint problem. Yeah, this is most common type when people uh, aging. Uh, Lyme arthritis or Lyme disease, and this is because of infections of bacteria, uh, and uh, this bacteria is carried by the tick, okay, so bacteria, the one that causing this infection, and usually this bacteria is carried or transferred from animal into human by the tick bite. Uh, there is another one, it's called the ankylosing spondylitis. This is usually affecting joint between vertebrae. Sometimes the cause is unknown. So there is a sometimes problem between the joint between vertebrae uh, without an uh, unknown case. And this is called the ankylosing spondylitis. Uh, there is a, a process is called the joint replacement to replace the joint, the broken joint, uh, uh, mostly like in the hip area is the, the, the most common place for replacement. So hip replacement, sometimes in the knee area, also knee joint, there's a knee joint replacement. There are several technology that use for this joint replacement, usually using material that resemble to natural body chemicals uh, uh, using 3D printing technology. Uh, sometimes using steel and titanium to replace the large joint area. Uh, silicon is used for smaller area.
and aging and lifestyle changing when we get older then there are some problem with the joint like joint stiffness this is usually the early sign for aging so it's difficult more difficult to move uh, in the some joint area uh, arthritis especially osteoarthritis this is due to the uh, reduced production of the synovial fluid and the fibers joints will also lose the strength over uh, over years when we get older cartilage also become stiffen like harder just like the bone some ligament will lose the elasticity changes in symphysis joint and so there is a less flexibility in our movement in the pubic area uh, synovial joints lost their function uh, disuse or less nutrient supply to the joint and it will speed the hardening of the cartilage uh, activity and exercise usually will keep the joints functions longer I think that's all for this chapter. So we finish with uh, discussions uh, joints. So we'll see you again for the next chapter. Thank you.